Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and I am here today with the charming, the talented, <laughs> the handsome, my best friend, my husband, James Bonanno. Welcome, James, to Adobe Live for your very first time. Oh, what an intro. <laughs> what an intro. Hi, Anna. Hi, my wife and, and best friend. It's uh, it's amazing to be here. I'm so happy to be on the stream with you and you all. And uh, I've been watching Anna put these streams together for so long. So I'm like sitting here a little nervous that I'm on here, but I'm also in perfect hands with my wife. So thank I you. I know. I'm nervous too. Who would think I'd be more nervous to host my husband than to host <laughs> anyone else? And we're sitting here in the same house in different rooms acting as we're saying hello to each other for the first time today. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stakes, stakes are very high. Yeah, but we see everyone coming into the chat. We got Bruce, we got Voodoo Val, we have Paco in the chat, and hello, everyone. Let us know where you're joining us from. James and I are in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania right now at my brother's new house and mooching off some of his Wi-Fi because, <laughs> as you may know, we are full-time travelers. So it's always a challenge trying to find the best Wi-Fi. Yeah, it really is. I feel like this is a constant struggle for us, but we're uh, we're grateful for family and friends that allow us to set up our entire studio in their house or apartment. So uh, you'll eventually you'll find some consistency. But for now, this is this is where we're at. So yeah, thank you, Evan. Yeah. Oh, and our friend Cannon is in the chat. Hello, friends. This is so exciting to see people that we know coming in and people from all over the world. We got Netherlands joining us and Portugal, London. So wow. cool. Uh, if you guys are watching over on YouTube, be sure to come to behance.net slash Adobe Live so that you can join in on the chat, say hi to James and I, and uh, ask him some questions today. So before we dive into things, I just want to take a quick look at the schedule. We only have one more thing for the rest of the day, but let's go ahead and look at that. Um, so later this afternoon, we have the Creative Encore replay with Howard Pinsky, and uh, that is going to be a replay, but you guys can join in on the chat and, uh, and make some really beautiful stuff. So let's go ahead, James, I'd love you to introduce yourself to everyone so they can get to know you and a little bit about our background. Of course. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you, Anna, for the intro. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the stream. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, as Anna said, my name is James Bonanno. Um, I'm actually a full-time uh, video creator, content creator, photographer, editor, sort of jack of all trades. Um, I My background was previously in... Uh, working in uh, corporate America as a video producer. I worked in uh, TV for a little while as a creative editor, uh, so to speak, in, in that regard um, for a company called Participant Media. Um, and then I worked for Verizon in their uh, digital media department, which feels like a long time ago, but that was only about a year, a year and a half ago. So uh, a lot has happened in that time. And we've since started um, really working for ourselves. Uh, and Leave the Map is our our business and and what we create all of our content for. So uh, I'm behind the scenes a lot of the time, creating a lot of the video work that you guys might see. Um, I have our uh, site up here just to kind of take you through uh, some of the work that we're currently working on and that we've done. Um, like I said, uh, Anna and I, we travel full time in our camper van. So our studio is not really a at home place, but we work with uh, companies, different tourism boards, travel companies uh, throughout the world, uh, Getty and Marriott being a, a client of ours, L.L. Bean, Visit Santi Inez, a couple of our uh, travel companies here. Um, and we're primarily working with them to create photography content. Um, you know, you can see in here um, video content as well. So um, a big pitch and a, and a marketing piece for our business is to pitch um, video content for social and specifically for brands to use on their YouTube channels and on their Instagrams and Facebooks um, with our background in photography and video. Um, that's been a really, really successful way to us for us to market ourselves to a lot of these different companies. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of work in uh, more than a year and a half. We've been doing this as freelancers for quite some time, but full time for about a year and a half. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, kind of crazy how quickly it goes. Yeah, it's flown by. It's crazy. Yeah, it really has flown by. So, um, and then these are just some of our videos um, just on our YouTube channel, which, oops, that always happens. I'm used to that one. 
it uh, plays itself every single time. And I know that <laughs> video well. Um, and, and yeah, so I'm primarily, uh, working behind the scenes to really shoot and create all of our content. Um, the great thing about our relationship is that we do work together all the time on these things. And we have a pretty collaborative, uh, environment as, as a couple, uh, as mm -hmm. a husband and wife. So it makes things uh, a ton of fun. Yeah. I love it. It's one of the best things about my life. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Ditto. let's take a look at your Behance real quick and, um, and then dive right into premiere and sure. what you're going to be working on today. Sure. Yeah. This, uh, full transparency, this, this Behance is very new. So Anna's kind of gotten me into the world of Behance. So these are just a couple of different projects I have up, um, amongst video. I'm really into product photography as well. Um, so photography is also a passion of mine and I kind of flip between video and photography. Um, we'll get into some, uh, some elements of these projects today in premiere, but, um, if you guys want to head over to Behance and check out some of my work, some of our work, uh, as leave the map, um, that would be awesome. And ask me, uh, kind of any questions on the stream today that you have. All right, let's get right into it. Sweet. Oh man. <laughs> Are um, you nervous? Yeah, pretty nervous. <laughs> Even if I don't look nervous, I'm definitely nervous. This is the it's first it. time that I'll be like live showing people what I'm doing in Premiere. Yeah, it's just me and the rest of the world watching. No big perfect. deal. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. No pressure at all. Um, so yeah, so uh, we're going to be going over a lot, uh, a lot over the next two days. But I guess just to start to give you guys kind of an intro into what um, I plan on showing you in Premiere and what we plan on sort of working together. Um, the goal of the, these two days is to really um, educate you guys a little bit about the power of Adobe Premiere and just some of the hacks and the, the tips that I like to use when editing video in there. Um, and primarily what we're doing is we're creating video for clients and we're creating those videos to live on social platforms like TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and that's a lot of the requests that we get and a lot of the work that we do. So we felt like it would be a really good place to um, kind of dive into Premiere to start with some of the basics um, to really work through how to open Premiere, how to set different sequences, how to organize some of our footage. I'm pretty anal when it comes to organizing our footage and making sure that you can find everything. Um, as an editor, it's important to be able to do that. Uh, so we'll go through some of those. We'll reference um, some projects that we're we're currently working on. And then what we'll do is we'll go into how Anna and I work together um, in sort of a collaborative way. Um, Anna in Photoshop and myself in Premiere and how we're using CC libraries and kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, I mean, Ad Adobe's got some amazing uh, products and we're constantly trying to work with as many of them as we can in the easiest way. So, um, so yeah, with that, I guess I can kind of hop in here and get started. Yeah. So this is a video that we made for, um, one of our clients, Dave and Matt vans, and they're actually, um, the guys who built our van for us and they have since grown into this huge, incredible team. I think we were van number 20 or something very early on. And, yeah. uh, now, and when we were there, they just had one little hanger in a warehouse and, uh, and like four people working for them. And now they they have a huge team and like a massive, massive warehouse. And, uh, and so now they have the ability to hire us for their marketing purposes. And this was, um, a little Valentine's day video that they hired us for. And so I, I thought James did a really amazing job of putting everything together. And so when we were kind of planning this Adobe live, we figured this would be the perfect chance to show you guys how to make something really simple in premiere and then be able to, um, put it into, uh, TikTok and reels and YouTube and every platform that we end up using in today's society. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's um it's something that like we all have to adapt to too. Like every day you're using one of these programs and you're constantly trying to think of, well, even if I'm just making it for YouTube, like how can it be seen by as many people as possible on as many different platforms and that's something that I think I, I was even guilty with before getting into working for myself. Like, oh, I'll just make it for YouTube or for a website and be done with it and clients and and really everybody really wants to market their work to every platform. And so what we'll do is we'll go over like some of the pieces that I actually use to create this video um, and how, but primarily we'll be talking about, you know, how you can export it for these different platforms, what settings I use, all, all the goodiness and the goodness that is Premiere. 
um, my favorite program. I love it. <laughs> I'm in here every day, so it's perfect. Yeah, it's good that James likes it because I'm terrified of Premiere. So I'm going to learn a little something today too. <laughs> I've tried. Yeah, this is perfect because I've I've like tried to show you. I'm like, why don't I just show you Premiere and like we'll give a little tutorial. You're like, no, that's what you're for. You're like, you do all that stuff. <laughs> so now you have to learn. <laughs> I know. Now I have to watch. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, so what we have here, I already have a timeline set up, so I don't want to like just rush right into exactly what I've done here because that's what this whole stream is about. But I figured we'd have something to open with um, and really start with some of the basics. Um, I don't know the different levels of people who are familiar with Premiere or familiar with video editing, so I figured we could start a little more basic. Um, so what you'll see when you open up a new project, um, once you open Premiere and you just open up a new project, you're faced, oops, let's... Uh, Let's just do a new project just so that we can show this. Um, this is obviously your kind of your interface here. And what I tend to do is save, everyone has their, their uh, methods, but I like to save my project inside of a folder that I specifically name for that project. Um, and so I have about 8 million hard drives hooked up here, so I don't have anything unlinked, but uh, they're all organized the same. And so what I'll do is I'll save, you know, for Dave and Matt Valentine's day, that's the video that we're referencing here. I would create the folder and then have a projects file, project files folder. And so I save any project files I have within that folder. Um, and that just keeps me really organized. And then when we're referencing the project, you know, months later and it's archived, we can easily find it. Um, and then I have this same exact folder structure inside every single one of those folders. So I have an audio folder, Inside of audio, I have music, sound effects, voiceover. Um, there's exports, and you can see I have exports for YouTube and then for Instagram and Facebook. So I can keep track of the platform I'm exporting for. Graphics can be anything, animations, logos, all that stuff, photos, if we have photos, and then all the video capture. Um, and this is a little unorganized, but typically I'll sort that by b-roll or interviews or, or what have you so um that's just a little side note but it's really important to make sure as an editor if you're going to be working in premiere that you have some sort of like organization system um and this isn't like science this is just the way i like to do it so i love uh for anyone of you anyone in the chat who has better ways of doing this or their own ways of organizing their footage um i always just like nerd out on that stuff so <laughs> feel free to feel free to add that to the chat <laughs> Yeah, I think this is huge to be able to organize your files like that. And James knows that I am not an organized file person. <laughs> I have my stuff all over my desktop and just flooded around the computer. So it's good that he has that structured system. And if anyone uh, in the chat has any other recommendations for organizing your files when you're first starting out, um, also, we would love to hear your level of knowledge in Premiere, uh, whether you guys are just opening it for the first time, uh, maybe you know a little bit or you're more advanced just so we can really make sure that um, a lot of the lessons that we're doing today are kind of catered towards that. Yeah. And hello, Farah. She uh, was someone who I hosted um, a few weeks ago now. I'm like losing track of time. Yeah. Amazing artist. It's great to see you here. And a few more people that are just popping into the chat. Welcome in. James is going to be doing some premiere work today and showing you how to set up a uh, awesome video timeline. Yeah, welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining. I'm not looking at the chat, so I just I know we're in good hands with Anna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not going to actually name this file, but this is where you would open your project. Um, and there's a little tab here that's uh, that's called Scratch Disks. And when you start a project file, it's important that whatever files you're referencing are saved to that same folder. Um, and the reason for this is that, like any other uh, Adobe products or uh, you know software like Premiere, you want to make sure all of your files that you're using are linked to where your project file lives. So if you didn't have uh, footage that you shot linked um, and it was saved on like another drive and that drive wasn't plugged in, Premiere wouldn't recognize it. They wouldn't know that it exists. So just make sure when you are saving something that it, they're all organized and saved to that same folder. Um, so that's just basic kind of Premiere 101 of opening a file. Um, once you're actually in Premiere, um, and honestly, like kudos to Adobe on really creating, uh, a, an amazing, like ease of use way to go through each layout. Um, up here, we have our learning tab, assembly, editing, color effects, audio graphics, and libraries. And I don't remember when, 
uh, Adobe did this, but this feature like changed the game for the ease of use in Premiere. Um, and I, I tend to use the editing tab when I'm actually building a project. So if I, if you open up Premiere, it might start with the assembly tab. Um, and this is kind of preference. You have all of your files here. Um, and like I said, I've already imported all this stuff and I'll show you guys how to do it. Um, but this is essentially your assembly tab. So you can see all of your clips to the left and then you have your timeline below and your, your program window editing is where I like to just kind of live most of the time because I can see everything at once. Um, you have your color tab, um, and so on and so on. And we're, we're going to get into a lot of that later on, uh, in today's stream and tomorrow. Um, Great, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people in the chat are saying that they're uh, just beginning or they've opened it up and aren't really sure what to do. So they started playing with Rush. Um, and so I think kind of giving like some really basics of how to get started and make sure. Something. Sure. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to actually, actually, I could just keep this open. Um, I think that's a great place to start. I really do think like the basics, there's so many basics in here that it can be pretty overwhelming for someone that's never opened this program to be like, how do I start? How do I just make a video? Um, and that's the intention of today. Um, so if we're in the editing tab here, this is, this is kind of the base tab. Um, the first thing that I like to do is just import my footage. So I'm going to get out of premiere for a sec, just so I can open up a new file and show you guys what a clean slate looks like. And then we'll come back to this so that you, you can, uh, understand what we're looking at here. So Perfect. let me just click out of this for a second, hold tight. Just cause it's a little bit easier to do it that way for people that are, are brand new to the program. Um, I used to actually be a Final Cut guy way back in the day, and uh, <laughs> I've been using Premiere for a very long time because of um, all of these additions to the the software. It's it makes my life a lot easier. I forgot about Final Cut. That's what we had to learn in school, and I kind of yeah. wish they taught us Premiere. I know. Well, in college, they started teaching us Premiere, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I I think Ithaca was all about Final Cut, and I'm like, no. <laughs> there's still like, there's still like diehard people that are final cut, just fanatics. And I, I understand that, but I am not one of them. <laughs> um, okay. So here's our, here's our main interface when we first open premiere. So it, this is going to just be starting with a clean slate. So we're going to go to new project. And like I said before, let's just go to browse. Cause this is where we're going to save our location. Um, and let's go to the drive that I'm going to be saving this at, at on here. And, uh, let me go back here for a sec. So we're in the month of February. I've already done an Adobe Live folder. So let's just save our test there. And we'll just name our file Adobe Live Video. And because we've now decided that this is where our project file goes, our scratch disks will also be saved right to that folder. Okay, we press OK. And this is what we're looking at. So this is that editing tab that I was showing you guys earlier, but with nothing in it. So this is a completely clean slate. Um, it looks beautiful. And uh, let's start to populate some, some footage and show you guys how I would work and how I would organize uh, a video. So here right down to the left is your project window. Um, and this is where all of your media would be imported. So you can either drag media from your desktop or from wherever it's saved, or you can double click it um, so I'm going to double click it and let's find some footage. Let's just go in here. We're going to go into our Valentine's video. Paco and... said, we're not paying them to say this. We swear premiere pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> All right. So let's just grab a couple clips. Um, and I'm, I, these are usually better organized, but I'm just going to grab a handful just so I can show you guys what this would look like. Okay, so now we import our files and our files are imported just like this along the panel. And these are uh, little toggles here. So there's a list view and then there's an icon view. When you click the icon view, I really like to work in here once everything uh, loads a little bit because you can actually see the, the video clips. So you can see, you know, if you had a really big monitor, you'd be able to see right here exactly what you're editing and you can pull clips right from this view. Um, but if you're more like into lists and you want to make sure you see everything a little more organized, you can keep everything in list view. Um, so that's just a personal preference. And I like to toggle between the, the two of those. Um, if I was going to organize all of this inside of this folder, you could come in here and right click and create a new bin. 
and bins are great because you can just organize things uh, by music, by uh, video, by graphics, by whatever uh, method that you choose. And so we're just gonna call this video capture. And we're just gonna drag all of the clips right in here. Um, and you'll notice that on each of these clips, there's a little, I don't know how much of that you guys can see, but there's a little uh, audio form, like waveform, and then there's a video clip. And if you were to just bring in a video clip that had no audio, you wouldn't get that audio uh, icon. So that's just telling you that there's both video and there's audio on the clip that you imported. Okay. Um, and I, I can continue to kind of go in the weeds, but I'm trying to be as like basic, <laughs> but still informative here too. So. Um, you can see that your frame rate right here, um, this is important and we can get into some of that in more detail. If, uh, you guys have questions in the chat of what frame rates to use and, uh, and why that's important. Um, but just know that, uh, if you shot in 60 frames a second, so that clip here says 59.94, or if you shot in 24 frames a second or 23,976, um, is what you would commonly see it come in as. Okay. So let's say we double click our clip. We see Anna in the van doing her thing. I don't know if this it's is like a... Inception. <laughs> it you is. have me she... here and I'm there too. She's here. She's downstairs. She's everywhere, people. <laughs> I love it. Um, I don't even know. Some of these are kind of bloopers, but I think I picked some good ones. So, so this was um, just for some context. We were filming a Valentine's Day video for Dave and Matt Vans, uh, which was mentioned before. And the whole goal was to create um, five tips to really keep the romantic spark alive while traveling in a van, which which we try to do all the time. And um, this was specifically for Valentine's Day and for their uh, YouTube channel. So we came in here and we sort of dressed the van and, and we really worked on creating some B-roll to go with the story. Um, and one of those tips is you know, putting flowers in the van and creating a little space. So if I was going to take this clip and drag it onto my timeline, because that's where I wanted to start, um, I would maybe move my playhead down the, the timeline here. And I, I'm thinking, okay, this is a really good first frame. So let me start here. And what you would want to do is if you drag this whole clip right now without any in and out points, it would take the entire clip. But if I want to start the clip here, I press I on my keyboard um, and that's the, the shortcut or the hot key. And then, oh, it's pretty easy to remember in and out um, for when I want that clip to end. So I would dra drag it here. So cute. I love the smile. And let's cut it right before her, her chin kind of comes down. So I'm going to press O. And if I click and hold the entire clip, and you'll see the little plus icon in the hand, you drag that right into your, into your uh, timeline. And what it's done is it's actually created its own sequence down here in your uh, project panel. So if I were to click on that, I could then name this whatever I want to name it. So let's just name this, you know, flowers with Anna because she's cute. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> flowers with Anna. <laughs> and, um, and you can see that that's now created a sequence. If, if you don't drag this in, so let's just back up a second here and we're going to undo this. So you'll see that there was no sequence created. If you wanted to manually create a sequence, there's a lot of different, similar to Photoshop and a lot of Adobe's programs, there's a lot of things that you can do in multiple ways. Um, and it's just a, a matter of preference and, and kind of like ease of use. So if you come up here to file new, you would create a new sequence right up here or command N. And this gives you the entire sequence panel. Um, and so this is how you can actually see what settings that sequence is going to be set at. And so, um, we're going to get into this a little bit later. I've already made some custom like Facebook um, uh, and real uh, sequences. So those are specifically sized for social media and for those platforms. But if I wanted to just go into my settings and use this clip for YouTube or for a, a, a horizontal format, I would go into the frame size and you want to make sure that your frame size is always set at 1920 by oh, not 108. 1920 by 1080, and that's 16 by nine. So that's your standard um, aspect ratio for YouTube and for um, pretty much anything that you're creating that's native to a website. Um, and then don't worry about any of this other stuff if you're just starting to work in here. Um, these are just editing modes, uh, but basically as long as your frame size is set to that appropriate um, dimensions, then you're good to go. You'd come in here and name this. So let's just name this. This is our sequence, so flowers with Anna, 
and you would come in here and now the sequence is set, but the clip isn't inside of the timeline yet. So basically what happens is you can drag your clips and then the clip automatically creates the sequence or you can create your own sequence at whatever dimensions you want and then you can work with it that way. So does that make sense? Is that kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, so then what we would do is we would take that clip and we would drag the clip of Anna into our sequence and it would already be set to what we have here. Cool. So now we have a little sequence called flowers with Anna. And if we minimize that, that's, this is where we really start our editing process and where you start to add clips and you layer things on. Um, and this is really like the baseline of how you start editing in Premiere with these sequence uh, sequences. That's great. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions too, um, as James goes along through this, we know <clears throat> it can be a lot of information, especially when working with video. So uh, happy to slow down or speed up if need be. Yeah. Yeah, please. I mean, I don't, I don't want to go too fast where it's, uh, it's getting a little crazy, but yeah, please questions are encouraged. Um, I want to be able to direct uh, my tips in here for you guys and to be as useful as possible, but, um, I can kind of just continue to walk you through premiere a little bit and the, uh, the, the keys and the methods that I use to actually start like cutting something like this, this is just one clip. So what we'll do is we'll probably open up the other project and I can kind of show you, um, how I began to uh, build some of those, some of those parts of the video. Great. Um, um, and Karen says, uh, so sequences are specific to the end platform specs. Correct. Yes. So um, that's a great question. So the sequences are specific to, uh, they're not necessarily specific to the end platform specs. They're, if you were to export it ex exactly the way the sequence is, they're specific to that. But just for example, um, what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll create a new sequence as if we're creating it for uh, like a square Facebook ad. Mm. So if we come in, if we're creating a square Facebook ad from scratch, I've already done this template, but I'll show you guys how to do it from scratch. Your settings, um, and and if you guys don't remember this, like it's pretty, um, they're easy to find online, and you can just type in you know Facebook format or Instagram uh, aspect ratio. So the frame size for something like Facebook would be a square, and that's 1080 by 1080. Um, so if I wanted to just name this, um, you know Valentine's video, um, and then name it for Facebook, so that at first glance, once you get more uh, projects and sequences in here, you can keep yourself organized. And I pressed okay. You could see, you'd see that this now is a square instead of a 1920 by 1080. Um, and you can do that with any aspect ratio you choose. Um, and I think what we're, we're, what we'll probably do at the end of uh, today is actually get into some more of the exporting features. And so inside of those export features, you could then export them as a higher res, like 4K file, um, but it would still fit the specs for Facebook. Cool. Um, yes, very yes. helpful. Very helpful. Uh, another little tip here, and this I actually just learned. I'm like, this is so easy. I don't know why I don't do this already. If you don't want to remember all this and you just want to create it one time and then forget it, you can just watch along and do this right now. Um, if I like, so let's say I created this 1080 by 1080 sequence here for Facebook and I forgot how I got here or I forgot what I did. You could come in here and you could right click this little sequence tab and you can go create preset from sequence. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do is just name it. So if I just name that Valentine's video for Facebook, or let's just say, um, let's just say, call this like Facebook ad template. And then I press okay. Oh, let's just do a different one. Cause I already did that. Um, just to show you guys how this actually works. Facebook ad layout. Okay. Now, if I were to go command N and I'm going to create another brand new sequence and I scroll all the way to the bottom, all of these are basically just like presets. So these are available presets based on cameras. So you can see RE is a camera preset, 1080p. Um, you have like high def digital SLR presets. So they Premiere already helps you do a lot of that stuff. Um, and all you would have to do is click these and inside of the description, it would tell you the video size, the frame rate um, and the aspect ratio. So if you had all that info, you could very easily just do this. But if you wanted to create your own preset, it would get saved under custom. And so now you'll see that under custom, I've already saved one called nine by 16 for reels and a Facebook ad template. Um, so this, like, let's say we clicked nine by 16 for reels, it would actually 
look like a nine by mm. 16 format. So you can compare the three and they're all different aspect ratios, but with the same video. That's super cool. Yeah. So very, it's, it's always just a good like time saver. So the more editing that you do and that we do for clients, the more, uh, time, the less time we have to do this kind of stuff. So we want to make sure that we're maximizing and utilizing our time the whole, the whole way. Definitely. All right. So, um, yeah, any other questions I'm, I'm open to, to firing back on, on any of these things. Yeah. Um, Okay. So we're just, I know that this is just one clip and we're starting pretty basic because I wanted to walk you guys through some of the tools here in Premiere so that you know what you're doing when you bring a, a file in. Um, so to the left here, you can move these as you see fit. Like if you want to just have more timeline space, everything is, is kind of adjustable. You can move things around, um, and you can customize your entire, entire layout, um, depending on if you have dual monitors or, or whatever. Um, but let's say I wanted to just cut this clip. I'm going to drag this out. Um, so at the beginning and the front of these clips, you'll see that you can drag the clip to the beginning. So this clip now is the entire, uh, duration of the clip that I actually shot. So you can notice up here, I put in and out points here before I actually dragged it into the, um, timeline. But if you wanted to do it, you know, inside of the sequence, you can do that as well. Um, so if I wanted to, let's say, cut the first part of this out because I didn't like the way that, like, I want to start here, let's say, right <laughs> on the flower, I would want to cut this manually. So there's two ways to go about it. You can either drag the playhead here and it'll snap right to your playhead. So you'll know, okay, that's finished. If you undo that and you want to cut it with the actual razor tool, there is the razor tool to the left and you'll see that it's. Uh, it's a uh, quick command is C and that's in the standard. So if you hovered over that playhead, it would snap to the playhead. Mm. And so if you just click it, it cuts it. Uh, v brings up your selection tool and then you can just highlight that and now your clip is cut. Um, and so that's, that's like the basic level of actually cutting it. If you wanted to a little shortcut, I like to press command K and command K will actually cut it for you instead of clicking it. So very, uh, that's kind of the basic level of just using the razor tool and the, and the tools at your disposal to start to edit the actual video. Um, and of course that's, it might seem a little mundane, but it's really important to know those because the more layers you start stacking on top of each other and the bigger that file gets, which you guys can see here, we'll open it up because you can open it at the same time. It, it's really important to know those tools. So let's just open that up we can kind of compare the two. So if we're comparing both of those, you know, this is a, this is a fairly tame timeline compared to some of the other stuff we're working on, but you can see how everything starts to stack um, and really work on top of each other. And it's important to know the basics first. Okay. So um, another little trick here, sorry if I'm moving too fast, plus and minus um, on your keyboard is just going to extend your timeline. So uh, if we reference this whole file here, I'll just keep this up as reference so we can keep going. This looks like Tetris or I don't know <laughs> what, if I didn't know what we were looking at, I'd be like, what is going on? Um, so if you wanted to extend it so you could see more of what you're working on, you can press command plus, and that will actually expand your video tracks and command, oh, is it shift? Shift plus or shift option expands your uh, audio tracks below. And then if you do shift plus and shift command, it expands everything as a whole. So you can more easily then see the clips you're working on and get really granular at how to, how to cut them and how to edit them. And if you use that plus and minus tool, like we talked about, you can then zoom into your entire timeline and get really granular with the edits that you, that you have here. So it's easier to see it when there's a project built out than just one clip on a timeline. Yeah, that, that looks completely overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it can be. It really can be. And and it's uh, probably why my eyes are so bad, <clears throat> which Anna can agree with. <laughs> True. Um, so let's go back here a little bit. And, um, and yeah, please, any questions you guys have, I'm just kind of bouncing from some of the basic tools into some of the more um, advanced tools that, and methods that I use, but really the goal is to just give you guys a kind of a well-rounded, uh, 
knowledge of Premiere before we start actually like showing you how to export things as a, as a social video. Um, so to the left here, just a couple things to note. Um, if you, if you click an empty space, so right now, if we were to bring the playhead, you basically just drag this, this is your playhead all the way to the beginning of your timeline and you press space bar, space bar plays your video. So that's, that's kind of the basic. You want to make sure it plays it and it pauses it. Stop and go or other way around. Um, but if I clicked this little empty space and I press delete, that would then drag your clip all the way to the beginning of the timeline since we have made that edit and we've made a cut here. So now you should, oops, we didn't actually do it. So let's say we wanna cut this. We're gonna highlight it, Command K, delete, deletes the clip. And then you can actually click this and delete it. And there's a lot of different ways to do that when you're rolling through really quick edits. There's, um, if people have uh, methods that they use when they're, when they're editing quickly, I think like ripple edit or a rolling edit tool, a lot of people use, but I, I just like the old school way of deleting it. So a lot of different methods to, to work with. Cool. Um, <laughs> so let's say that's like our little clip and a little laugh. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, <cute. laughs> so, uh, we now are at the very end of our clip and just for the purposes, let's say this clip, we wanted to just take this clip and use this on Instagram or something like that. Um, instead of making a whole elaborate video, um, you would press O and O would then be your out. So that would create your, the end of your video. If you didn't press that and you had a bunch of clips in here, let's say, and I'm just dragging a few clips so you can see, um, if you exported the clip just as is right now, none of this would actually be in your video because it's outside of the, the playhead. It's outside of where you've allocated that to go. Um, if you wanted to extend that, you can just drag that out. And now everything within those parameters will be recognized as your final export. So let's just delete that for now. Okay. And we're zooming in and out all the time um, because that's that's like honestly a good procrastination tool. Like if I don't know what I'm doing on Premiere, I just sit there and I'm like, all right, zoom in, zoom out. Maybe I'll get some motivation <laughs> and creative spark. Probably not, but who knows? <laughs> that's what I'm doing upstairs most of the time. Yeah, probably. Like, what is he doing up there? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so th that's if you just want to like edit a basic video and just start here, that's a really good place to do it. Um, what we'll do a little later is talk about some of the adjustment layers and ways to actually like color grade um, what you're working on. And it might seem like this is a little low in contrast and that's because um, it's always good to shoot on a flat color profile if you're shooting professionally. The reason for that is you want to have the ability to color grade everything with as much dynamic range as possible. So you don't want to shoot with this super crunchy contrast. Um, sometimes GoPro, when they give you your camera, it, it like looks really, it looks like it's already been edited. And, and as editors, we really don't like that. We like to be able to have control over the colors that we're editing and what we're working on. Um, so I like to add adjustment layers to these clips when I'm finished. And that's kind of how I go about color grading it so that it looks like our style and we have the most control over what we're, what we're doing. And we'll get into that, um, a little later, right? Yep. Yep. We're okay. going to, we're going to basically break down, um, how we did this in this sequence here a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, do you want to show, uh, how you can kind of like add some other clips into this and with some audio, or maybe you want to show that on the Dave and Matt video. Sure. Yeah. I'd I don't want to do that. mess up your workflow, but I was just no, thinking of, no, no, I'm, I'm open here to kind of figuring that out. So, um, so let me just like, kind of, we'll talk about like, yeah, let's, let's try to add some music. Let's add a couple more clips. So this is just like a live, a little live edit. Um, I have no like plan with this one, but I was going to kind of break down what I had already done. So, um, I'll just play back maybe like the first 10 seconds so you can kind of see like where I went with this video so you know that it actually goes somewhere. Um, <laughs> and then and then we can we can show you guys how to layer in some music and a little bit of sound design um, and then some of that color before we actually go into exporting something. So let me just play those like first 10 seconds back for you guys. Hello everyone, my name is James.
you already know me now, so we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I like that first like 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that for now to our other timeline here. And that's just command C and command V. And that just copies everything that I just pulled. Um, and basically what you can really start to do and have fun with in Premiere is this idea of stacking and creating an environment and creating a mood. And so with this video, what we really wanted to do is create like the intro to feel kind of like a romantic, um, I don't know, jazzy vibe with some wine being poured and candles and things, things like that. And a lot of that is added in post, you know, it may not seem that way, but when you look back at some of that stuff, you can see that we have our audio tracks down here. We have def different uh, sound sound effects down here. So if I were to double click just this track here, mm. that's just a, a wine glass being poured that I've sourced. This right here is a really cool little like, I don't even know what you would call that, but I just liked the way that it, I liked the way that it came in with the text that we had here and it gave it a little bit something extra. Um, the song itself and the the track we have here is kind of how we start how I started this whole thing. So I knew that we wanted this this mood to feel very like jazz like, and I found this track. And you can already see you're like wow, I feel like I'm in like some cocktail lounge somewhere. Which, <laughs> I don't know somewhere in like New York City, um, not in the van. Yeah. So if I was going to start from scratch and actually uh, work that process a little bit, you can see that I've already, uh, created a folder called music. So that's what we were talking about earlier with creating bins. Uh, and inside of that bin, what I normally do is just drag a bunch of tracks that I've sourced from various places. And then that gives me the inspiration to create something out of the, the mood that the music, uh, represents. So in this case, we'll use, I believe it's this one. Okay. So if I wanted to then drag this uh, music track into our timeline, you'll see here, your little hand tool will pop up on the actual audio and you'll just come in here and boop, drag it right in there. And now the playhead where I set in and out points has dragged into our, our timeline here. And if I zoom in a little bit more, so you guys can see what I'm looking at here, this bar, um, this, this bar is on every, uh, music track, every audio file, every video track, and this uh, can do a number of things. So at first glance in for audio, it's, it uh, controls your volume. So if I were to pull this all the way down, you'll notice that the numbers are actually changing to minus 13 decibels, minus 15. So if I played that back, now it's a lot quieter. So you can, you can kind of find your, your happy place. And as you're playing, notice to the right here is where your audio levels are. Uh, as a as a good measure, you never really want your audios your audio levels to be peaking above like the negative three mark, um, because then someone's eardrums are gonna be really sorry. So you want to make sure that that's consistent and that stays um, within that negative three, negative six range. So let's say I pulled that clip in, and I'm gonna just like try to recreate this first little part here. Okay, so I like these clips here. If you're working in your timeline and you're like, I don't know where this clip is, right click it and reveal it in your project. And there it is right there. So you'll know, even though I'm organized, it's always good to, to be double organized. So are you just building this at the end just to show everyone kind of like the process? Yeah, is okay. That okay. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that like you're not adding on to this video. You're just kind of showing at yep. the end. Yeah, I'm just actually taking those like first 10 seconds because um, I think there was a lot going on there. And I'm just just so I'm comparing the two together um, just so that we can see what I'm working on here. OK, so I'm just dragging this a little bit closer. But imagine this is the start of our timeline and we want to start with this clip here. This is our. Our little cool bokeh lights that I really like. Um, I shot this, you'll notice here in the frame rates, this is about 60 frames per second. So I shot that to make sure that I could slow it down because I wanted that to have that really cool look to it. Um, let's go back to 
flowers with Anna. That's officially what we're calling this. So <laughs> I've, I've already had in and out points. And so what I'll do is I don't need the audio to this clip. So like we did before, if you drag the whole thing in, you'll notice that the audio clip comes in and the video clip. But if you don't want to do that, you can just drag the video clip and now your audio track isn't underneath. Um, so it's easier to work that way. Or if you want to drag both together and then down the line, as you're editing, you realize I don't really want this audio track because it's not necessary. Uh, what you would notice is that these are linked right now. So if you tried to just delete the audio track, you would also delete the video track. Um, but command L is a shortcut for unlinking the two of them. So then you can edit them individually as to not lose the video. So I would click this and then I'd remove my, my audio. Okay, so let's, we're gonna drag this clip. And as I drag, you'll notice that in the program window, it gives you two different uh, views. So you can see the clip kind of happening in real time, depending on where you drag it to. I just sometimes go based on my gut and based on what feels good. So if we play this back, like timing seems pretty nice. Yeah. So I'll add another clip. I'll add this, this cute little bed that we sleep in that we love so much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back here and let's toggle to this uh, view icon mode like we talked about before. Um, and now I've lost everything. Hold on one sec, guys. Sometimes that gets a little confusing. I think it's interesting the way you will sometimes find a song first um, before you even know what clips you're using and then set the mood um, or set the videos around that based around the mood that you're trying to build. Um, yeah. It's definitely maybe the way a, a video editor's mind works versus like for me, whenever I make videos for our TikTok page, I always like build the clips that I want first and then I add the audio in and then I like add my voiceover in. Yeah, no, I, I think it's so cool and like interesting because you definitely have a different style in that way than I do. And that might be because I, I feel like I've been doing the same thing with video for so long that like I don't stray away from that. Whereas I think we were trying to record voiceover for something and you weren't used to the way that I work. And so it was it's just a really interesting <laughs> workflow that you have versus the way that I work in Premiere. Yeah. Um, quick question for you from the chat. What yeah. camera did you use to shoot this particular video sequence? Uh, this camera was shot with a uh, mirrorless Canon EOS R camera. And I believe we had a 35 millimeter or a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, and that was just all um, just all native out of the camera. So we, we love that camera. It's, it's really uh, small and compact and We've had it for a few years now. We, it travels really well with us. Um, and so it's a it's a great kit uh, or a great tool to have in our kit because we not only use it for these videos, but we also use it as our primary uh, photo camera too. So, um, and yeah, going, uh, Anna, I think that's a great point. Like the inspiration factor when creating videos, when creating really anything, you know, not just videos, but um, video editors and like creators, we have so many different ways of getting inspired. And for me, music is always the way that I like, I can put myself into a moment, this video just being one example, but there's times when I hear some beautiful uh, ethereal track or something, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to make something with that, but I don't know what to make yet. So you start with the track first and then sort of build on top of that. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. cool. Okay, so let's go back here. We're just gonna build a little bit more of this. Um, so, here, I really like this part of the clip because it's a little rack focus. So we start blurry and then we end up on our, our comfy bed. So what I'll do is I'll set those in and out points. So let's go in and let's go O for out. And we don't need audio. So I'm gonna drag the just the video track right here onto my timeline. And the only reason these are colored is because I've gone ahead and I've col color uh, labeled different folders. So if you label folders based on a scene that you're working on, they'd also come in color coded. And that's a really, really good habit to get in the, or a really good habit to have once you start having timelines that kind of look like this. How do you do that? Where do you color code them? So if you're in your projects here, um, mm -hmm. all of your assets come in with, I think like a standard orange uh, label. If you right click, and click down on it, you can see label, and you can come in and label any number of colors 
Um, and I like to, so if I go into scenes here, I've created a scenes folder and inside of that folder for this video, I've color uh, coded each scene. So okay. under, underneath I have like anything where we were setting the mood is orange and anything where we're cooking a dinner is this like cool blue teal. Um, and that just helps for me to see it uh, visually on the timeline rather than just everything being one color. So that's why everything is showing up as multicolor on the timeline and looks like Tetris. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not intentionally meant to confuse you. That's because I did it that way. <laughs> so for anyone wondering why this looks crazy. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, they're like, I don't want to learn this. They like just if they just go right to this screen, they're gonna be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm I'm done. I'll, I'll, I'll learn this another day. I'm fine. <laughs> I think that when you zoom in on it, you can see a lot more of actually what's going on. And like, and I think something important to note, as James mentioned, is he's really uh, careful about like layering everything. Um, so I don't know what the words are, but so uniquely to your style and, um, and like taking, doing the sound design and layering like little bokeh effects or like color effects or um, multiple clips on top of each other and kind of building this robust timeline, which is not necessarily something that you have to do when you're first getting started. Right. If it just means putting a clip into Premiere, adding some music to it, transitioning into a new clip and maybe even doing some voiceover, then that's perfectly fine. Like just as a reminder, James has been working in this program for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. And in no way, like, should this feel discouraging in, in any sense? I think it's important. Like everyone has different levels of, of where they're at in these programs. And like Anna said, I've been, I've been using this for a long time. So there's some projects that are really basic that don't look like this. Um, and this one is kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but Anna's right. Like you can, creating video and editing video is so accessible to everyone now that it's it's really it's amazing it's so cool that everyone can get their hands on software like this and work in it pretty quickly um and we're trying i'm trying to give you guys kind of a bit of both like the basic world of how you start and what something could look like down the line as you start getting a little bit more advanced in in premiere um but just to just to go back here just to show you guys a couple of like some of these basic edits. Um, this is just a hard cut here. So we're going back to what we were creating before. So let's just play that. And so I don't really like that the blurriness of that doesn't start right away. So what I'll do is I'll drag this and these are just creative decisions that you get to make, which is super fun. And that's why uh, we love being creators. And so I'm gonna drag this back here. So that my clip starts a little bit later than I initially anticipated. Okay, so that that looks kind of kind of nice. It's a static shot, but I can show you guys how to spice it up a little. And I'm just gonna cut this a little sooner because it looks like I shook the bed, <laughs> like right there. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm just going frame by frame with the uh, left and right keys. So this is how you can go literally frame by frame if you were gonna start to cut. Um, if you wanted to fast forward on your uh, timeline, you would press L. So if I press L, that's just fast forwarding the, uh, the timeline. And if you press it twice, three times, it speeds it up and the same works for reverse. So if I wanna reverse something, I can then press J, and so J and L are a really good shortcut if you're if you're editing pretty quickly and you want to skip to the next next frame. Yeah, and pro tip for everyone: if you um, in any of the Adobe programs, there are so many uh, shortcut cheat sheets online. If you just Google it, whether it be for Premiere or Photoshop, um, I used to have like a printout of it next to my computer for Photoshop when I was first learning, so I could remember those hotkeys. And you can actually go in and customize them too. But those generic hotkeys that you would use or shortcuts that you would use for everything, um, just Google Premiere Pro uh, shortcut cheat sheet and and then you can follow along with what james is doing i think they also i don't know i know final cut used to do this i think there's probably somewhere you can buy it like if you're using a keyboard or um i guess any computer you can get a little overlay that sits on top of your mac or your whatever you're using 
Yeah, I feel like Adobe may even sell them. They're pretty cool. Yeah, they're, I I've, I used to use one in college and for some reason, like I, I couldn't get over just like having that there. It was just kind of annoying for me personally, but it was a really good way to learn the hotkeys. And so yeah. the hotkeys, like you don't have to know them, but eventually your fingers will thank you for it. So definitely um, it's useful for sure. Um, all right, so let's just add like two or three more clips in here and uh, and kind of start moving on a little bit. But um, what you can see here, and like Anna said before, I've layered a lot of things on top of each other. So just because when you open a Premiere file, they you have maybe four video, four empty video tracks, and then four empty audio tracks, you can continue to layer stuff forever. So your your timeline can look you know gigantic, um, but ours is pretty small right now. And the reason for that is so that you can layer overlays and like light leaks and text on top of stuff and other footage on top of each other instead of just being limited to one piece of video. And as an example right here, I'm just gonna mute this for a sec. Um, this is M right here and for mute. So you can mute tracks. So if I just wanted to play this back without the music, You can see, Ooh. yeah, you can kind of, you can kind of hear what I did with just the sound design um, and you can solo and mute things as you go. So uh, in playing that back, you, you'll see that we not only have our video right here and our bed, but what we also put on top is this little kind of like overlay light leak transition. I'm going to mute this too, because I don't want to hear it. So we're going to mute a couple of those. You can mute as many clips as you want. Um, that way you can just play it back without, without the audio. So we'll see, there's our little, our little light leak coming through. And I liked that because it almost served to be a transition to the next clip instead of a hard yeah. cut. Um, and that's why it's nice to stack clips on top of each other. And then above that, you'll see a text layer. So this is similar to the audio. You can turn your layers off here with the toggle eyeball. So if I toggle that off, you wouldn't see the text, but if I toggle it back on, now you can see that our text fades in. So in partnership with Leave the Map, that's us. Um, and that is a text layer. So you can create text, which is perfect for social videos on top of any video. And I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. And if people wanted to get some of these light leaks and like fun little effects, where do you recommend going for those? Um, anywhere like they're so accessible um honestly i think i bought these um a couple years ago from uh someone's youtube page i i don't know the exact one but if you search like downloadable like light, light leaks or free light leaks um they're pretty much everywhere if you wanted to take it one step further you could always buy a, a bundle or a package and then save that on your hard drive um you know i have just referencing this folder here i have a folder that I call video assets. So any hard drive has this uh, folder and inside of them, I have sound effects packs and things that I've, I've, you know, downloaded and purchased and collected and created over the years. Um, and light leaks are one of those. And so you can easily buy a, a pack online and then just save them so you can use them for your reference in the future. Cool. Um, icons, fonts, all that stuff. So if you were going to use this light leak, I'll show you guys how to use it real quick. We're getting into some more of like overlay and not masking, but some minor advanced stuff. So I don't know if you want me to talk about that. Yeah, let's do that. And then, um, and then show the text you were about to show. Okay. Um, and then we'll uh, go into a little bit of Photoshop. Cool. Okay. Let's do this real quick. Let's add our other clip to save some time. So I'm just copying this clip into our new little sequence here. Oops. Um, another little trick is when you're copying a file or you're copying a clip onto your timeline. So I copied this candle with the audio and I'm trying to move it here. And what you'll notice is when I paste it, it actually overwrites my music track. And that's just because that's our first track we see. So a way to avoid doing that is you come here to the little toggle track lock and you click that. And now what this has done is it's actually locked this track. So you caught, you paste it and it actually puts the clip below that track so that this is a, essentially non-existent. And then I'll drag this in and then I'll unlock it so that nothing happens to it in the future. So a little, little like work around, but it works. Yeah. All right. So let's add our little overlay here. 
So let's go into a folder that I have saved and this is called overlays. So like I said, organization from the beginning, I can't stress that enough as an editor. It's so important, especially if you're going to be doing this as a profession and not just as a hobby. Um, so I'm going to come in here and click on this little warm leak. So if I press the space bar, this is that overlay. So it's playing back in weird ways. And I kind of like, and you find a place that you like, you find a spot that you're like, okay, this looks good. So let's start here. We're going to press I and we're going to go right to when it fades out and we're going to press O. And now we're going to drag that like we did before, right onto our clip above that video. We don't want to drag it on the video because that would then overwrite the video. We want it to be an overlay and we want it to sit above our first video track. So we drag that on and at first glance, you'll notice that if I play this back, we don't actually see the video underneath that. And that's because we haven't blended this properly. Um, and Anna has is a master of blend modes in Photoshop, um, but it works the exact same way in Premiere or After Effects or really any of the idea of blending is, is the same. So the reason that these clips are great to download and purchase is because they're either shot on like a black background or a white background. So you can easily blend them into your videos and make them look really subtle. So we'll click this clip and any clip we click, if you go to the left panel here, you click this little toggle down, you'll see where it says effect controls. So you click effect controls and you have all of these video properties that come up and we're going to click our property here. Why is that not showing me what I need to see? Here we go. So under opacity is where you'll see blend mode. So you have all of your motion properties. We're going to get into more of this tomorrow in actually creating some graphics in Premiere. Um, so we won't talk about it today, but we'll just touch on opacity. So if I click the uh, clip here and I go to blend mode and you go to screen, now I've screened out the black background and now we can better see our overlay the way it should be seen. Unfortunately, it's very, uh, it's just too, too aggressive and it's not subtle enough. So what we'll do is you'll see that there's that bar like we had on our audio level. And if I drag this down, rather than adjusting the volume parameters, it's adjusting our opacity parameters. So I'm now dragging this down and that's at 46 opacity, 35. Let's drag it all the way down to like 30. Okay. You know, and now it's starting to feel a little bit more subtle and like it belongs. Um, yeah. you, you can come in here and you can actually add a little cross dissolve default transition. And that makes it a little less abrasive on the front and back end. And, you know, that's a, a really easy way to put an overlay in. So, so that little cross dissolve that you just added, is that a way that you would use to uh, transition between clips too, or is that just kind of like an in out effect? That, yeah, that's more of like an in out effect, um, transitioning between clips. If I wanted to, let's say I didn't want these two clips to be a hard cut, hard yeah. cut, meaning, you know, like just one clip on top of the other, you could click this, uh, right click, and then you can add a default transition and that would mm -hmm. add a cross dissolve. So let's just hide this for a second so we can see what that would look like. And you can extend it, you know, far out. So it could, it could have a cool look if you wanted to go from here. Okay. You know, to something like that. Um, if you, if you move this in, the duration's a lot shorter. And so it looks a lot different. So that's, that's a really interesting way. I don't use those too much, um, but as, as someone editing from the start, they're really useful to have and, and they create like a really cool mood. So you can yeah. cross dissolve anything as long as it's, as long as there's enough of the clip on the front and back end. Yeah, I, I think especially when you're first learning, like using uh, transitions in between video clips is really useful, whether it be cross dissolve or something fun, like especially for TikTok and Reels, like kind of doing the swipe transitions and the really like fast, cool stuff um, before you learn, as James is showing here, like how to layer everything to kind of custom build those transitions. You're just using what the program's giving you and uh, and making your life a lot easier when you're first starting out. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There, and, and, uh, similar to the overlays and like different transition packs and stuff. Um, these are things that I'm working on trying to put together in the future, like creating packs for people to download. Um, but if you guys are, if editors out there are looking for places, honestly, I go to YouTube all the time and Google just to search overlays or light leaks or transition packs. And there's plenty of creators out there that do create these things for editors and they're, they're usually uh, pretty inexpensive. So it's, yes. it's worth having in your, in your artillery. Yes. And Voodoo Val just put a great reminder in the chat that you can get them from Adobe stock as well. Lots of different Absolutely. types of overlays and video overlays. I use Adobe stock all the time in my Photoshop work and get my overlays from there. So, um, very great source to use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, cool. So let me just hit on one other little point here. I mean, we can talk all day about Premiere, which obviously <laughs> we're doing in like two hours, but, um, I didn't really touch on the pen tool and I'm not really going to get into too much detail here, but this is a really easy way to use it for beginners. Um, so along the left-hand side, you have your pen tool. So if you press P on your keyboard, that would pull it up. Um, and if you wanted to, um, create that same like opacity dissolve a slow, let's say a slow fade in rather than just using the, the uh, preset cross dissolves that they give you, you would come on this bar here and you would actually create points. So I'd click a point there and then I'd click a point here and then I would go back to my, my um, selection tool and I would drag this mm -hmm. point down. And so that's essentially doing what, um, you know, it's creating that opacity fade in and out. And so it gives you a much more granular and like specific way to actually edit um, your opacity. So if I play that, now that actually fades in. If it if I felt like it was going too fast, I would just click this point here and I could drag this down my timeline even more. And now that's a much longer dissolve in. So the pen tool is really, really powerful in every program, but um, I use it a lot in Premiere as well. And would you use that the same way? Like if you were controlling the audio and you wanted it to go up and down and up and down, you would use the pen tool? Yep. Yeah. It's really, it's, that's where I use the pen tool the most, actually. That's a, that's a great point. So if I was going to come here and um, I'm going to butcher this track just for a second, just so that you guys can see how <laughs> how it works. This is for pure demonstration purposes. So I could come in here and add uh, as many points really as I want, and it would do the same thing for the volume. So it controls the volume for audio. It controls the opacity for your video. So if I pull these down, um, let's just add one more. I don't know what this is going to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just move these a little closer. And I'm just basically holding shift and then I'm moving the points to where I want them. Um, I've seen some really cool um, effects done with audio where like there's these like car, uh, like, I don't know, like car mechanical sounds that are created just by doing this weird thing with like the pen tool in wow. your audio track. So you can, you can get creative with it and have fun, but. So you get the yeah. idea, you, you can kind of hear how that works. Um, I remember doing that in iMovie back in the day when I was like trying to edit my little family vacation videos <laughs> and using the little audio points. And <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I love those movies. They're the greatest. <laughs> Poor James had to sit through all those at one point in his life. <laughs> No, it's the, it's the best. It's so cool. Cause like, I see all of your little like iMovie videos and things. And especially now with you being really interested in creating all the TikTok videos and things like that, it's kind of come full circle. Like you've always been into that for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Before we go into Photoshop, uh, you had mentioned showing us how to add text real quick. I think yep. that's an important aspect of making yeah. a video. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to add, so basically this is what we're going to do really quickly. We're going to make this a basic text ad. So if we go back to the original, so that's what we're going to add right there. It's just a very basic text, but I want to show you guys how to create any style of text on these videos. So what we're going to do is we're just going to layer our text, um, under this overlay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the overlay up to another track so that I have this open track here and that's where I'm going to add my text. And so we're going to go to the graphics panel for this. So this is where the other panels really help you to better cater to what you're doing. So anytime I'm adding text, I go to the graphics panel at the top, uh, bar up here. 
and this just helps you to see a little bit more of the properties in the text panel. Um, so I'm going to move some things around here. You can see that I have an essential graphics tab over here. And um, a lot of these are just uh, stock with Adobe. So if you didn't want to create anything and you wanted to add like a lower third, you could easily come in here and just drag this on. And these are presets that um, are already created for you to just basically start from scratch. Um, but I'm going to get into that tomorrow. So we'll just make this one our, ourselves once my computer decides it wants to uh, cooperate. <laughs> and that's actually uh, similar in Rush too. It gives you all these little um, title sequences that you can use so that you don't have to create anything from scratch. Oh, cool. I didn't, I didn't know that that did the same thing in Rush. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just, uh, we're gonna create our text. So here's the, our little type tool. So T on the keyboard. We're gonna come in here and I'm just gonna type in partnership with leave the map. Okay, and don't worry about the fact that it's moving off the page. You come in here to your move tool and you can now move this wherever you'd like. Let me just move my uh, little window here so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, um, and so if I double click in here, you can now see that just by typing, we've had a, a text layer show up on our uh, timeline, which is great. So that's what that's what you want. You wanna have as many different text layers for whatever you're you're creating. So let's just move this. And we're gonna move this right under our overlay. We're gonna drag it out. And I'm going to come in here and this is where you can adjust any of your properties. So you have all your font properties. So if you had your own font you wanted or you wanted to use Typekit or really just any number of properties are in here, we're just gonna use our font that we use for leave the map. And uh, I like to always align my text, depending on what I'm doing here, under the align and transform tab. And this will keep everything nice and centered and uniform. Um, and so that's, uh, that's that part of it. You can now go down here and you can adjust your, um, is, is it leading or letting? I always mess it up. You would know uh, better. I guess you could call it either. I call it letting. Okay. I'm going to say letting cause you're the pro. So <laughs> we'll just, uh, make that a little bit bigger. Let's go back into our scale. So right here's your scale properties. So if we wanted to make that size 70. So these are all things that you can adjust. Um, you can always adjust these sorts of uh, properties. Let's align that again. And then let's maybe change the color to be not pure white, but maybe like just above pure white, a little gray. And, um, and I think what I did is I made our in partnership with a different um, line width or a different uh, font kind of uh, what did I have here? Go bold is what we use. So I, I do like go bold thin here and then go bold, bold, um, just like a little subtle change so that our, our name stands out a little bit more. Okay. And so these are all the properties and the way you can, you can change everything around. Now, if you went back into your timeline, your text right now, because I have it kind of hanging over to the first, the first clip here is just going to abruptly um, come in. but I wanted to really have that nice smooth transition in um, like we showed you before. So we're gonna take our P, our pen tool, and we're gonna do what we did before, and we're gonna add two points so that we can actually have a nice little opacity fade in. And what I think I want is I want that to fade maybe kind of like before that overlay comes in. Maybe we want this to drag out and um, let's just have this fade out again. So we're gonna drag the clip out as long as we want. We're gonna add two points here and we're gonna do the same thing and we're just gonna drag that out. And that's you know a very basic way of adding text to your timeline, to your clips. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, tomorrow we're going to really get into working with some of these properties to the left, the uh, motion properties. And that's really how you can start to create some graphical elements out of that text. Um, and I don't want to take up too much time today to do that because that's going to that's gonna take, take some time. Yeah, that will be fun tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, how are you feeling with things? Do you want to hop over to Photoshop real quick and then go back into do coloring and final export properties? Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, you want to chat about like CC libraries and kind of how we work with those a little bit um, before we go into Photoshop? 
Yeah, we can do that. We can start um, on your screen with the CC libraries. Cool. Okay. Um, so this is awesome. Like Anna and I are, we talk about how we want to use these all the time and we're finally getting there. So um, <laughs> it's about time. Honestly, it's just like an internet issue that we face. Um, but like we, like we've mentioned, like the collaboration piece of, of how we work together is really important. And so any way we can, uh, collaborate more efficiently so that these projects don't take as long and we can get them finished quicker and in the best way possible. And I think uh, Creative Cloud Libraries is a really unique and fun way for us to share files with each other, um, Anna working in Photoshop and then myself working in Premiere. Um, and so we'll uh, I'll just quickly show you how this is set up and then we'll transition over to Anna's screen so she can show you guys um, how she kind of created some of this in Photoshop. Um, but these are Creative Cloud libraries that we've set up so that we can share uh, color codes for our style guide. We can share photos. We can share, you know, on per projects, we can share different assets. So for this specific video, um, Anna's been doing this in Photoshop and she shared different images, different, um, you know, hearts and things that we can use to create a, <laughs> create a thumbnail for uh, the YouTube video. And it's a really, awesome way for us to like on the fly share stuff with each other um, so that she can be editing, I can be editing and, and we can better uh, work on a project together. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And do you want to just add a screenshot from sure. um, the video so we can show people over in Photoshop how it comes in? Yep. Yep. That's what I was going to do. Okay. So let's see. So I'll show you guys um, how you can actually like share files here and, and add them. So, um, let's take a better, let's take a better frame than that. Hold on one sec, guys. Let's That's go, it. let's go back here. And so what I'm going to try to do is just send Anna a screenshot that, um, if you didn't take a photo for a thumbnail, um, and you wanted to just pull a screenshot from your video, how you would do that and then share it in CC libraries. So, um, let's go in here. Let's go into my folders, my millions of folders called, <laughs> called snuggles in bed. Who does that? <laughs> That's actually what I called it. So <laughs> James is the romantic in the relationship, <laughs> as you can tell from his file naming structure. How can you tell? <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take that because that looks pretty cute. And uh, we're doing this sort of fast, but let's say I want to take this photo and save this as a screenshot and share it with Anna so that she can start to like build um, some sort of thumbnail out of it. So what I would do is I would make this full screen to get the highest resolution uh, possible. So I click a little, the upper tilde or whatever you call that. I don't even know what that that is called in your keyboard, but it's basically just view full screen. So you can actually see your whole, your whole video here. Um, and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna screenshot uh, just this frame because this frame looks pretty, pretty cute. Okay, and then we're gonna go back. And then what I'll do is we're gonna go into our libraries, our CC libraries, and I'm going to drag that screenshot into that Valentine's Day folder so that because Anna and I are working in two separate rooms, she's working downstairs, I'm working upstairs. We're gonna drag this in as a little JPEG. And you can see that it's coming, it's come in now as the screenshot. And I'm gonna actually rename it real quick so she knows what I'm talking about. Um, cute bed photo for <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> my, my naming my naming structure is all over the place um, and so ideally now that is shared with anna and she could go into her photoshop in her cc libraries and pull that photo and start building a thumbnail out of it that we might want to use for youtube all right and then right before we get into that, I know we're um, starting to get shorter on time, but uh, someone had a question about when you import a video file and the audio is missing. They said, I have to create a new sequence for the file and then drag it into my main sequence. Why does this happen? Um, and Steve suggested that maybe it was a guess, his guess was that um, due to the camera, maybe the audio and the video are combined in one. Um that that could be an issue it could also be sometimes depending on the frame rate that you shot the video in it doesn't record audio um or your audio file like your audio track is locked for some reason so 
what we were showing you before, like this locking tool, if your audio file is locked, maybe the audio track isn't showing up. Um, but sometimes the camera, if you had, let's say like, um, an external mic plugged in and the mic was off, it wouldn't have actually recorded any audio. So there's kind of a number of reasons, uh, as to why that would happen. But, um, yeah, unfortunately there's like some troubleshooting elements to kind of get over the hurdle. If, if you recorded something without audio and you thought you did. I think too, if, if you know that you do have audio, I'm not sure if you can do this in premiere, but I know, um, in rush, you can extract the audio from a clip. So like if I just put in say a cell phone clip into rush, then I can, and then it's combined as one, then I can extract the audio out of it and then edit the audio separately. Yep. Yep. You can do the same thing in premiere. Um, and that's, you know, if you were to take like what we were showing you guys before this clip has audio on it, uh, let's find a different clip that maybe is a little, um, so I'll just pull this. There's no actual, uh, necessary audio, but there is audio. So if I were to drag both in here and you see that you have an audio file and an audio clip down here, but you didn't want the visuals, you could come in here and remove command L would unlink them, or you could just click on it and unlink the files. So here it says link. If you link it, now the clips link together. If you unlink, you can edit them individually. And then I would remove this. And now this audio file just kind of lives on its own and you can do what you want with it. So, um, so there's, yeah, there's ways to just edit the video, just edit the audio, edit the audio and video together, vice versa. Cool. Um, all right. So let's switch over to my screen and, uh, go into Photoshop here. And I want to show you guys, um, how to edit a thumbnail for YouTube. Awesome. All right, so I'm just going to X out of that. And so I just opened up Photoshop and I'm going to go file new. And then I'm already on my YouTube, uh, my YouTube preset here. But if you wanted to create it, you would come over and YouTube is 1280 by 720. James informed me of this. <laughs> the YouTube, and, the, the YouTube thumbnail, not yeah, the YouTube aspect ratio. Yes. The YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> good, good to add that in there. Um, and then you can save this as a preset by clicking this little down arrow here and then type in YouTube and mine already exists. So let's just save it as YouTube too. save preset. And then that's always going to be living up here under save. So that's just super helpful whenever you're doing like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and trying to remember all these different aspect ratios for your images. So let's go ahead in here and uh, click create. So now you can see that I have some images showing up over here from the libraries that James already gave me. There's that screenshot that he just sent over and I can just click that and drag it right in. And then I can fit it to size. You must've been saying something so funny. I know I'm just hilarious. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so I could use this as, if I wanted. I also added in a couple other photos that I wanted to play around with, but um, mainly we wanted to show you guys how easy it is to go between um, any of the Adobe programs using the CC libraries. If I wanted to add some text and I wanted to make sure I'm using one of our leave the map colors, um, then I can just go in and type some text. And then I can click on this color. Let's see, should be able to click on it. There it is. Oh yeah, that work. Does that work? No. Huh. Um, let me see. It was working before. Oh, there we go. Okay. I don't know what I did there, but um, so you should be able to go back and forth and use these colors within your workflow. So I'm just gonna get rid of this for now and get rid of this cute little screenshot that James took. And I'm going to add in this background photo of us for the thumbnail. And so I'm just gonna quickly design this thumbnail um, kind of based on like the style that we do on our YouTube. And um, let's see. 
So we usually try to make something like very captivating and a little bit clickbaity and find some good looks for that. So I'm going to add in a rectangle here and now it's picking up that color and I should be able to come in and click onto another color. Yep. So now you can see it's picking up those CC library colors. So let's say we wanted to make it orange for now. And then I'm going to use my type tool and, um, what were we calling this video? Um, flowers and Anna's hair. Oh yeah. Flowers. <laughs> um, I think we're, I think it'll be five romantic, five romantic tips to keep this or five tips to keep their romance alive in the van. Okay. Five tips to keep the, we keep changing this title name. <laughs> yeah, it just changes every day. And that happens. We're like, what are, what are we doing? And then, so luckily in this way of working kind of back and forth, if James changes things within the video, um, I can go in and then update the thumbnail and then give it back to him if he's going to use it in the video. So um, then I'm just going to add in another shape here. I'm going to add another rectangle. And I'm just kind of doing this based on what I know I want it to look like uh, in terms of graphic design work and everything. That's all obviously a personal preference. Um, when living in a van. So just adding that in there. And then um, usually I like to do, I'm just trying to get this sized and we'll shift it down a little bit. I'm just seeing that you guys aren't seeing Photoshop. Yeah, I can't see you either right now. I think, are we on my screen? It looks like it. I just, everyone. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how much everyone saw of that. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how long we were going. I just realized that in the chat, you guys were saying that you didn't see Photoshop. Um, so let me know um, what it, what you saw, but. Maybe back up a couple, a couple steps because I think I missed some of it too because I wasn't able to see your screen. Okay. All right. Looks like we're in there now and. Looks so good. Yeah, so now it's a surprise. Now you guys are seeing it already <laughs> designed. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, so really all I did, very basic Photoshop stuff here, is I just added in two shapes um, just like this with the shape tool, two rectangles, um, and then added in some text. So, um, and what I was doing here is I was using the CC libraries to um, to make sure that I was able to change the colors based on our leave the map branding. So you can see, you can just click on these and they automatically change the colors. So it's really nice when you're working on multiple projects across platforms. Let's say you're in Photoshop making something and then you want to design like a brochure in uh, InDesign and you need to remember what your colors are and you can put logos in here. And then for James and I working back and forth between Photoshop and Premiere, it works really well. Um, and just keeps us consistent. Yeah, so it's, it's great too for, um, I mean, for any uh, number of jobs, but especially for like client work, uh, most video jobs or any kind of photo jobs and design work that we have, um, you know, clients are very specific about their branding colors and their uh, logos. So rather than sifting through a million emails to uh, find those those uh, PDFs that are sent as style guides, it's great to just create, you know, different folders for those clients that maybe you're working with more consistently. Um, and that way you can just always access it among uh, wherever you are, as long as you have Creative Cloud. 
Yeah, exactly. It's really useful. So I'm just making these a fun pink color because this was a Valentine's Day video that we did. And because it's about keeping the romantic spark alive, I see Chris asked, do you guys live in a van? Yes, we do part time. Um, uh, we were kind of doing it full time. And now with the winter, we've been bouncing around the family and stuff. And we've been um, traveling around the US for a year and a half now. Yeah. Yeah. About a year and a half, like, like on and totally off. <laughs> losing track of time. And then of course with COVID, it kind of put a damper on things a little with the travel life, but, um, yeah, it's, it's super and fun. <laughs> we're missing our cat is missing there though. She's yeah. usually, she's usually right up there next to us, but we kicked her out for that photo. Yeah. Our, our cat Lucy travels with us. And, um, so that was what we got hired for, for this video. It was like, how do you guys keep the romantic spark alive living in a van and being married? It's obviously a little bit tough when you live in a small space. So we gave some tips to keeping that alive. One way so, to do it is to do live streams with Adobe together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I am now adding a drop shadow here. And when I add a drop shadow, I try to just keep it really simple. You can see, um, let's see if I can zoom in here. Um, I like to keep it very sharp rather than kind of spreading it out like this. I like to keep it just kind of uh, tight and clean and then change the opacity and the distance. So I'm gonna put the opacity around there and get the distance. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Subtle, but but very, very nice. Yeah. Um, and so now what I can do is I can control click on this, copy layer style, and then apply it to this five tips as well. Go down and paste layer style. And now we have both. So then we also added a few little emojis if we wanted to kind of make it a little bit more clickbaity for YouTube. And I just grabbed those um, from Google, put them on my desktop, and then dragged them into creative libraries. So I can bring this down, size it in. Um, you can also, uh, you should make sure before you size it that you're making it to be a smart object. Um, which I, let's see, convert to smart object. There we go. That will make sure that it holds its size and that it's not gonna change in resolution. Although it doesn't really matter with something like this because it's kind of just like a dumb little emoji. But if you are doing this with high res graphics, you wanna be careful about that. I love it. This is, yeah, I feel like we go back and forth with this, with this title and with the, the thumbnail, but honestly, the thumbnails for YouTube and for um, you know any other platform, uh, it may sound kind of silly, but a lot of the thumbnails end up being sort of like the make or break of who watches your video. So if you can make it, you know, very clear of what the video is catchy enough where someone's going to be scrolling and, and might click on it, um, it's really impactful to have a, a high resolution, just like really awesome thumbnail. Yeah. And, and we'll probably change this. I'm just kind of doing it quickly. Sometimes we'll take our time with it. And this is maybe like a little bit too corny, um, but it's definitely, it's off to a good start. So um, I'm going to just send this back to James now. And so I'm going to do a command. Let's see if I command shift command option E nice. and that will stamp all of the, um, all of the visible layers so that it's one layer here. And then we just, let's see, what did we do last time? Drag this in. Uh, and, there it, yeah, there it is. Yeah, right? there it is. Okay. So now it's back into the library. So James should be able to grab it. Um, and yes, I see Bruce asked, we missed the process. You grabbed the colors from the picture. Yeah, we grabbed the colors from the picture initially. Um, we did have them in our, our CC library already because there are branded leave the map colors. Um, but you can always go in and grab the colors from a photo or wherever you want. You can see that I actually wear the colors <laughs> in my clothes. So let's go ahead and go back to your screen. Okay, cool. Um, you come back and my, my screen is uh, spin wheeling, but give it a second. It's just rendering itself. But I did see the uh, thumbnail come through. So basically what we're going to do now, and this is uh, sometimes overkill, but if uh, if a client uh, asks you for this, or it's sometimes necessary, depending on where you're posting the video, if YouTube or if let's say a website is your final place that you're posting a video and you don't have other thumbnails, 
um, what we like to try to do is have the th that thumbnail be the first frame of the video. So what we'll do is we're back to our, our video here and we're gonna go into our libraries and you can see that Anna has added this. This is called layer one. So I'm just gonna rename it so that I can keep track of it. And we're gonna call that thumbnail. Let's just say version one in case we make other ones. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, let's shrink our, shrink my timeline here. And I'm gonna drag the thumbnail and you can see it comes in as a, as a layer and I don't wanna drag it onto any of my video layers. So I'm gonna go above this layer and this is only gonna be one frame. So it's okay if it's long for now, we're gonna cut it down. So I'm gonna zoom in and the reason that this doesn't fit right now inside of our video uh, panel is because like Anna said, the, the uh, ratio for thumbnails in YouTube is 1280 by 720. And the ratio that I'm actually creating this video at is 1920 by 1080. So naturally this is gonna be a little bit uh, smaller, but don't worry. We I think will... that's, that's actually the one we designed before the stream. Oh, is the new one? In Not it? that it matters, but. Oh yeah, wait, here, let's do this. Oh, so that was version, that was thumbnail so you guys, one. You guys can decide which ones you like better. <laughs> Ooh, there, that's gonna be a tough one. Let's see. So this is thumbnail two, let's see. Yeah, wow. see, James is now naming my files. <laughs> I just yeah. left layer one. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah, layer one through layer 800. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so yeah, this is the new one. I like, I like this, this one. one. <laughs> Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so let's use this one. So uh, we're going to go into our effects controls and we're just going to resize it because it's a little bit small. So we're going to go to our scale and you'll see, you can actually like just pull this down until you see that it fills the frame. So that's at about 150. And don't worry, it shouldn't really pixelate too much. Like we said, it'll be, it'll be on there for a split second and it's really just intended to be a thumbnail. Um, and so then what I would do is you don't need this thumbnail to be more than like half a frame. So you just take your right key, move up a frame, come in here and we'll go command K and that'll cut the clip. And then we're going to remove that. And so now all you get is the very first frame is that thumbnail. And it, the reason it moves by fast is just because it's one frame. But what that will mean is that if you were to upload this natively to a website, uh, this would be the very first frame that you see. And so that could be your thumbnail. Uh, if you uploaded it to YouTube and you didn't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, upload another thumbnail, you'd have this as your thumbnail ready to go. Um, and it's just yeah. a really nice way of, of presenting your video to, to the world. Yeah, and you may have seen that sometimes when you um, add something, add a video to Instagram, whether it be on the feed or on Reels or even like with TikTok, um, you have to choose your cover photo. And sometimes I know back in the day before Instagram made it a bit easier for you to choose the cover photo, it would just sometimes show up as a black square because that was like your first initial shot um, before it actually went into the video. And so this saves that and saves you having to think about what thumbnail you're going to use and everything. Totally. Yeah. And I, I want to just quickly show you guys that exact process again, but for, uh, like if you were going to be doing an Instagram, uh, native video or a reel, um, I don't know. I mean, when you post reels, you're typically creating that in rush, right. And then the title, the text and everything is on the video or could yeah. this, it could work this way too, right? Yeah. It could work this way. Okay. So let's just go back into CC libraries and, um, this is a nine by 16, format of a of that video that same video that we've been going over but just for reels specifically um, which was a client request so that's why we made that for reels and we'll probably use that on our own reels um, so let's go in here and rather than a thumbnail maybe we just want it to be a photo of the two of us um, because we don't want the text on it we just want it to be just the photo so we've already added a few in here i'm going to drag this photo in called background and that's that same photo that you guys have been looking at and it's a little bit zoomed in because it is a photo and it's bigger than that nine by 16 format. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna come over to our effects controls panel into where it says motion. And you'll see that when I click motion, if I were to zoom out here and I go to, oops, zoom out, James, not zoom in. I go to 20, 10%, you can see that the box around the actual uh, space is, is highlighted. If I click off of that, then you don't see it anymore. So motion just helps for you to see everything as a whole. And let's go to 25% and we're going to scale this back. So let's scale it to, uh, let's go right to about there. I think a little out. 
Yeah. I had a feeling you were going to say that <laughs> like there. <laughs> yeah. And let me move it over a little. So we're like slightly more centered. Um, and if you want to get really, really specific with getting this centered, if you right click here and you go to safe margins, this is kind of an old school way to do it. You'll see that these safe margins, um, this is like title safe into the old broadcast format. Um, so that anything that's outside of these boxes is actually like cropped on the screen. Um, it's less likely that you would need that now, but I like to do it for centering stuff. So I just kind of use this to move us in between those hash marks and that looks pretty good. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. So we just do one frame right here and now we're going to scale that back. And so that would be your thumbnail now hey, for a Reels video. You guys can hear my uh, voiceover voice. It gets a little crazy. Hey, everyone. Crazy. We're Anna and James of Leave the <laughs> Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> if you want to cool. see more, go to our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, really, though. Um, so... Yeah, I think um, there's a lot that we we definitely want to cover. And um, Anna, I know we're getting a little bit like crunched for time today. So do you want me to go through like the export process and then save color and all that stuff for tomorrow? Yeah, I, I think if you feel that that's better, I think that would be good. Um, if you, I feel like based on what you showed me, color may take a little longer and export should be pretty fast. Um, and now that you're in this nine by 16 for reels, I'd love for you to show everyone, like how do you take a YouTube video and resize it for reels and TikTok? Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, cause I think, uh, if you guys let us know in the chat, if that would be useful, it seems like it would. Um, so what we'll just run through in the last uh, part of the stream here is, um, exporting the actual video file for YouTube and then resizing it so that it fits for a TikTok format or an Instagram format um, and exporting both of those. So, um, yeah. quick question for you. Uh, Bruce yeah. wants to know if the thumbnail needs to be crispier or docked up a little more in color in general. Um, I, I would say that was just a personal preference with this photo. Is that true? Uh, yeah, it's, it's totally personal preference. I mean, I think you can probably go overboard in certain cases where you end up making a thumbnail that's like too elaborate and vibrant. But, um, for us, it was, I just, this is kind of our look, so it fits with our brand, but if a client requested that, then yeah, you can certainly go as crazy as you want. Um, and you can still make like, uh, edits. So if, if in premiere, I decided that I wanted to make this a little bit brighter, uh, and I guess we'll, we'll roll into color real quick. Um, I would go over to the color tab here. Um, and so that's another tab where we can actually color grade things. Um, and we're going to probably get into more of that tomorrow if we run out of time today. But, um, if I click on my clip here, do, and these bars help to actually move some of this stuff up manually. I'm going to drag this out for a sec, just so I can see what I'm working on. Um, this is my Lumetri color tab um, and another nod to Premiere. I know they're not telling us to say this, but they've done an amazing job over the last few years with their uh, Lumetri, Lumetri uh, color grading tab inside of Premiere. So you can grade everything in a very similar way than you would in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, those that are familiar with Lightroom kind of know what this looks like right here. So if I wanted to, let's say, make this photo um, a little warmer or a little bit more contrasty, I could easily do that by adjusting all of these tabs here along the right-hand side. Um, and if you look to the left, you'll notice that my scopes here are all being changed in real time. So mm -hmm. to the right, um, I have this for the, um, the red, green, and blue channels so that I know whether an image is actually too cool or too warm and how to make sure that I fall somewhere in the middle. Uh, underneath is controlling just your your brightness and your luma. So if I were to really like crank this and overexpose it, you would know and you would see that anything above that, you know, 204 mark is way too, way too overexposed. And the same goes for anything in the shadows. So once that line comes in, then you know you've gone too far. So it's a really good indicator. And I don't color grade anything without these scopes up. I think this is a really good tool too for um, like if, if I were to hand this thumbnail over to James and he already had his video color graded and looking the way he thought looked best uh, for our YouTube page, then he might kind of tweak my thumbnail a little within Premiere. Um, 
as you guys may know, I tend to go oversaturated and a bit bonkers with my colors um, from my own work, but we try to tone it down a bit for Leave the Map. And then James kind of puts his own twist on YouTube. That's kind of his bread and butter, whereas I take over TikTok and Instagram. Um, so we just try to keep like our styles consistent while also matching like our own interest within our business. Yeah. If yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that, and I think we do a pretty good job of it. And, um, I mean, your, your brand is, is a totally different beast altogether with the colors that you use and that's perfect for what you're doing. And I think, I think for us, obviously having consistency is always important. Um, and, and we, you know, we always make adjustments on the fly as we go. Um, and so I think, yeah, in looking at these panels here, if you guys really wanted to like go crazy with this, um, you can go under to the creative tab and, um, similar to a, a preset in Lightroom or in Photoshop, um, a LUT is what you would essentially use as the equivalent to that in um, video editing. And so a LUT stands for a lookup table and it's essentially that exact uh, profile that's created that's already a preset, like a pre-built look for you. So I'm gonna throw this on here just to show you, but it's probably gonna look a little weird because it's already edited. So uh, similar to the text, Premiere already comes with loaded, um, LUTs that you don't have to buy or you don't have to create. So some of those are actually pretty cool. So you can see that like just by adding that on there, if I toggle the creative LUT off, it creates this really interesting look. It's pretty green and orange and looks a little weird. And you can see the change that it makes to the left that the green, my green channels are now a little bit hotter than they were before. And that's all based on the color that you're putting on here. Um, cool. And the nice thing about these LUTs is that they don't have to be 100% intensity. You can take them down. So if you like that look and you want to bring this to like 20%, now you can you can kind of toggle that on and off. And it's subtle, but it's it's definitely a nice a nice little grade for your for your work. I'm going to turn this off though. Um, and if you were to buy somebody else's LUTs or if you were to create your own LUTs, this gets into a little more detail. But this is where you would find them. So you could browse a hard drive where you have LUTs stored. So if I go in here, like I said before, I have a folder of different LUTs that I've kind of sourced over, over, you know, my time of editing and some of them I like, some of them I don't. If I open that, then that would come in as a LUT. And if I took this back to hundred, you could see what that would look like. And so that's like a really cool kind of film look that is, you know, if it's your style, then you can go that route. Um, you can, play around with your curves. So this is your curve adjustments layer, your hue and saturation. Um, this is your hue and hue slider, and this is your hue and luma. So that's just brightness, color, and saturation basically. Um, and we'll get into maybe that a little bit more if we have time tomorrow. Yeah, I think let's go into more detail um, with that tomorrow. Cool. So you can really show everyone how to use the colors. Awesome. All right. So we're running close on time. So I'm just going to show you guys really quickly how to export this. I'm going to shorten this again. And so if we were going to export this file, um, I'm just going to shorten it. So for time's sake, let's just go to the first like 10 seconds here and show you guys how to export this so that we make sure we keep these properties and you can post this to TikTok. So let's go back to our editing panel here. Hold on. Man, time really flies when you're trying to edit all these things. It's crazy. Do you want to actually show the export for the um, Valentine's Day video versus the TikTok video sure. since we didn't get into sizing that and we can sure. save that for tomorrow? Sure. Just so yeah. we don't jump ahead of the process. Yes, I would love to. I would love to. Um, all right. So this is our finished video. Let's imagine you guys all watched me make this entire video from start <laughs> to finish. Um, but let's go to our out point and we're going to press O and that is what's going to set our out point. Like we spoke about earlier. And there's a couple ways to export out of premiere. You can go file export media or command M command M is your shortcut. And when you open uh, open that up and then you'll have another dialog box that appears that looks like this. And in that dialog box, um, hold on. So in that dialog box, you have a couple options. So you have your format up here. Um, and my format is currently set to H.264. If you're new to all of these like codecs and formats, do not 
worry about anything else other than H.264. That's just going to be a really easy way for you to export stuff in a high enough format and not be overwhelmed for first time video creators and editors. The preset, you have all these presets. So like we've said, Adobe's done a lot of this work for you. They've already created a ton of presets. So what I like to do um, when uploading to YouTube is I like to upload the video at a 4K resolution. So it's twice the size of what your sequence is. And the reason I do that is because YouTube and a lot of other sites tend to compress a lot of your footage. And so if you uploaded something at 1920 by 1080, which is pretty much the standard of what you're, what you're watching it at, YouTube will compress it and the quality just doesn't look as good. So a little hack I use is I just go down here to the bottom and I go YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD. And I click that and I'm exporting my video and my audio. If you only wanted to export your video, you can just you know check those off and your file size would be significantly smaller if you only exported audio or if you were you know just exporting music or something. Uh, here's where you would include your output name. So if I click this and I go over to, let's go to my folder here. So I'm already in this folder. I always have that exports folder that I showed you guys earlier. And I would put this inside of the YouTube folder and then I would save it so that it's already in the folder you need it to be. You can name it whatever you want. So that would be your final cut. And you're pretty much good to go. That's all you really need to worry about um, at a very basic level. If you didn't want to export it at a 4k file. Like you just wanted a standard file. Honestly, these first options are your best bet. So you'd come in here and your match source would just be high bit rate. And that is just matching exactly what your sequence is. So we've set up that timeline at a 1920 by 1080 and we're exporting it at a high bit rate at 1920 by 1080. And then you would export and it would do its thing and it would be finished. Um, okay. All right. So if you, if you wanted to, uh, if you had multiple videos to export at the same time, you would queue this up here. Um, and I don't want to open it now because it might take a little while, but, uh, media encoder is another Adobe software where you can essentially do the exact same thing, but you can batch export everything. So let's say you had five or six video files that were going to take about 20 minutes to render. You could do them all at the same time and then go have a cup of coffee and come back. So cool. it's a real, it's an easy way to do it that way too. Yeah, that's really helpful. I know earlier in the chat, people were asking about the problem with when you export and you get a lot of compression, uh, especially for YouTube and for any of the other social media apps, it seems like it always wants to compress the files. Yeah, it's kind of the worst. Like, I don't know why, but they always do this. And it's just another good way to, um, I like to export everything as high as I can in 4K, just so that if, if you lost your entire uh, file that you were working on, which you know has happened, it, it's the process of being an editor. You at least have this one really high res video that you can go back to and use in your portfolio or use as as your previous work. So it's just it's always good to export at a higher file, and you wouldn't really like push the software if you did that. And so when you export in Media Encoder, you're just you're doing the same thing, or or what's like the major yeah, difference? Let's just see if I can open it. So the major difference with Media Encoder is you have all the same properties here, but I'm going to queue this up um, and let's just see how long it takes. My computer has been pretty fast today, guys. So, <laughs> Well, if it crashes and dies, we're almost at the end. <laughs> we're, we're almost at the end and let's see, might not even open up. Uh, oh, there it goes. Um, so for those that don't know Adobe Media Coder, it's just, it's a way to do exactly what you're doing here in Premiere. It's just an exporting tool. So there's no other properties. Like you can't edit anything in there, but you can better um, like batch export stuff. So if you had 20 interviews that you wanted to export, you wouldn't have to export out of Premiere and then wait an hour and then come back and wait another hour. You could just go put everything into Media Encoder and press play, and then you can just let it sit for the day and export. Okay. Um, so it's really more for like, if you had multiple projects that you were looking to export rather than just like a one-off video. So if we were just exporting this video just for YouTube, you would probably just go ahead and use it, um, through premiere yep. or export yeah. it through premiere. Yep. I would, I would probably just use it through premiere and that way you're not having to deal with having media encoder. Um, but I, I tend to do a lot of like batch exports on projects. So it, it helps for what I'm doing. Cool. Um, 
and now it's sort of loading, but kind yeah, of not. It's going to be nice it's, and slow. Hey, my computer did okay today. It I almost, know. It almost blew up this morning, guys. I'm not even kidding. I had a bit of a meltdown. Yeah, James I, uh, <laughs> had to call Apple. It was a, a bit of a stressful morning. His keyboard would not work at all. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, heard. it just decided not to work. I'm like, today of all days? Yeah. Like, so. What the heck? Luckily, we got that figured out. But um, as we're wrapping up here, does anyone have any other questions for James or for myself or about our business? Uh, if you missed anything from earlier this afternoon, you can rewatch that at any time. You can rewatch any of the Adobe Lives at any time. And we will be back tomorrow for day two. Um, tomorrow, we are going to get into a little bit of uh, creating motion graphics within Premiere and uh, creating graphics in After Effects uh, as well as touch on the coloring aspects that we didn't get to finish up today. And, um, and we may even get into Rush. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here with you and to bring my husband into the <laughs> Adobe Live world for you guys. I hope you all learned a lot. Uh, I feel so special to be a part of the Adobe Live family <laughs> finally. And uh, yeah, thank you to everyone that joined the chat. Um, I, I can't see you, but I know you're there and I really appreciate you uh, tuning in. And, and yeah, any any other comments that we get, we'd be sure to touch on tomorrow uh, in our uh, next two hours of going through Premiere and uh, After Effects. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Join us tomorrow for day two and join the chat on behance.net slash Adobe Live so you can take part in the, in the conversation and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.